Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center and I'm here with Chia with her movie In an Empty Wood. Let's take a look at the clip. But how dare you? How dare you take away the essence of me being a color? Who do you think you are? You say you are the majestic glaciers, while well, I am the richest passion. You brandish with that pale landscape, which I can scorch with a raging breath. Hear me. I chose this path. I am red. This is my forest. Uh, Chia, thank you so much for being here today. Congratulations on your film. Thank you. Uh, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a, a brief synopsis of your film. It's a poetry that it's about the jealousy of seeing someone succeed in the path that you once desired. I, I, I love it. And I honestly was so captivated by the beautiful poetry and the images. Uh, where did the inspiration come for you in creating the project? Well, two years ago, I met this friend, this girl, who, um, so I was a biology student before I went to the field of art. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. And she was an animator, but mm -hmm. then she became a biologist and doing education and wildlife while I was doing biology. Now I'm an animator. Our paths sort of switched. Wow, uh -huh. that's amazing. And our, our personality and goals and desires in life are very, very similar, but instead of being best friends, we sort of became jealous of each other, but we didn't show it, but we kind of just know that I'm stepping into your territory, you're stepping into mine. Yeah. And then the jealousy just kind of overwhelmed me. And one day I was walking in the woods mm -hmm. and then I suddenly thought, wouldn't it be great if we were the same person and we're just splitting and doing what we want to do. I love that. Wow, what an amazing story. So that led to this inspiration for making this film. Yes. Um, I love all the, uh, the, 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 the poetic side to it as well. And I thought that actually the, the voiceover was fantastic. It was very, oh. very passionate. How was that process for you? So I put up posters and asked for voice actors at school. Mm -hmm. And so one of the actors uh, auditioned mm -hmm. and his audition tape this just blew me away yeah. it was just with this phone it was crappy the, the, yeah. the, the quality but the, the tone was exactly what I want yeah so um, I've already recorded another person at the time uh -huh. but then I heard that I was like I needed this person yeah so then we recorded again and then he just delivered exactly what I wanted, yeah. and I didn't have to do much directing at all. So casting is important. Cast, and it, <laughs> but he really got it. Like yes. I felt he got what you were trying to what you He's were trying amazing. to say. His name is Hao yeah. Feng. By there the way, there you go. See, <laughs> hired. Um, it was the imagery was so striking. Like you know, when you're making a short film, particularly a short animation, you know, you've only it's, it's a limited time to kind of be captivated by the content and everything else. But I was like. Just you, the way that it was moved and taking us on this journey, the trees and the colors and the red. I mean, would you, did you kind of want it to be kind of like this very, you know, feeling explosive piece of just, because you just got us straight away? Um, uh, it, the development took a big turn uh -huh. at first because I got the idea from uh, me splitting and so that I could do both things. Mm -hmm. So then when I was pitching the idea to my teachers at school, and then the idea was like, there's two girls in the woods. And then, oh, the first one was actually in a museum. But oh, that wow. one went away. The second idea was two girls in the woods. Mm -hmm. One is doing something, the other doing something else. I couldn't mm -hmm. figure out what those are. And then they're jealous of each other and wanted to beat each other. That mm. was the idea that I keep trying to develop. And one of my teachers said to me, like, you have to figure out what these two girls are doing. Is it one picking flowers, the other picking berries, one climbing trees, one running, or what is it? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, what's your story? What do I want to tell? Mm. And if it's like picking berries and flowers, maybe one means it's more practical, the other is more like not so practical. But what is the story that I want to tell? And I went back to my room and it was thought about it for a long time and realized that my story that I want to tell is that no matter which career path or whatever path you choose, it doesn't matter. They're all good. It doesn't, it's not like one is this, one is that. They're all the same. They're all beautiful. So the only the way that I thought about could 
actually have no comparison was using colors. You can't compare to colors. Yeah. They're just individuals. I so, love that. I love that. There's, there's so, much, so much in this. I love it so much. Um, what was the biggest challenge for you? Biggest challenge? Um, I don't know about challenge, but like the whole process was fun. First was the writing the poem part. It took me four months. Mm -hmm. I went on and interviewed my friends like, would you have any experience in jealousy? And then they sort of just one by one helped me a little bit, like dark secret of them. And then I took a lot of the what they say into the poem, wrote it. It was five minutes long. And then our school, uh, we had a rule that we had to make a one and a half minute, a two and a half minute film for second years. So I had to cut that sort of in half, like a little bit sentence, cut in half, cut in half. And then sort of refined it. That took four months of the writing. It was fun. And the challenging part was how do I make it? At first, I wanted to do it stop motion, probably using paper to mm -hmm. kind of build it up. Or I could sort of watercolor it traditionally. And then my film workshop teacher said that the fastest way is with CG, just one button, you can change everything. And so I started, I did never made a CG film before. Wow. So I went to some teachers who know CG, um, and then they helped me a lot. Wow. To like figure out how to make the trees grow, how to make the ink crawl and stuff. Wow. That was the challenging part. I, I'm always overwhelmed and fascinated at just how much work obviously goes. And I think people don't realize how much work, particularly in animation, is a, it's a lot, you know, and it takes a, a long period of time to actually make as well. Um, how long was the length process for you making your film in um, terms of the actual kind of production? So I said four months of writing it. Yeah. And it was a bit of a last minute, only like two or three months of animation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then probably, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And then four days of sound. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot, it really is. Uh, what, what, was, um, what was the experience like uh, having a new filmmakers Los Angeles in front of an audience? What was that experience like for oh, you? Oh, it's, it's incredible. It's, this is my first film festival that I physically go to. Oh, great. Yeah, and then it's interesting to um, sort of curious what the audience reaction is. Mm -hmm. And also afterwards, um, there's the reception. And I didn't know people would come to talk to me. So I was just like, I'm just going to be in the corner. And then people do come. It's like, oh, and then sort of talk about the film. That's great. It's like, whoa, people actually talk to me. Cool. That's <laughs> what it's all about. That's what it's all about, most definitely. Um, what's next for you, um, So I'm entering my last year at school. And we're required to make one film each year. So my, I'm just currently developing my last film at school. Okay. which the time limit is seven minutes or less. So it's going to be longer than this film. Do you know the genre yet? Genre? Not yet, because I learned to set the story that I want to tell first and then decide the genre. I love that. I love that. One thing I love about everything you've been saying today as well is just that, you know, like sometimes you might go down a certain path and then think, OK, that's not going to work. Let's try this. Or, and I think it's such an important thing as a filmmaker to, you know, maybe learn from mistakes or maybe try new avenues or things you haven't tried before. I think that's really, really good. And hopefully that will never stop for you. Um, but what's one piece of advice so far early in your career that you go by as a filmmaker that maybe you could share with everybody? Oh, um, one thing I learned a lot from making this film is that the story is very, this is the most important. It depends on what kind of story you want to tell, whether we want to go avant-garde or, or mm -hmm. experimental or stuff. But if you're like more story-based, then the design and the sound and the music and even like the whole genre and style, everything has to support the story. So if you're story-based, don't, don't um, think about what genre or, or, or style or music you want to do. First, that would kind of, kind of hinder you. Mm -hmm. First, snail down what you want to say, what you want to tell, mm -hmm. and then everything else supports it. I love it. It's like you've been doing this 50 years, but hey, um, you got so intelligent about it all. Um, thank you so much, Cheer, thank for In so Empty much. Woods. Lovely having you, and we're looking forward to seeing much more of your projects. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Cheer. Everybody.